Eight-year-old me would be wildly upset at 25-year-old me saying this, but a single chess match in the Queen's Gambit kept me more on the edge of my seat than the entirety of Godzilla King of the Monsters. Yes, inner eight-year-old, you heard me right. Today on The Edit Cove, we're going to take a closer look at how creators Scott Frank and Alan Scott, along with editor Michelle Tesoro, made two people moving pieces around a wooden board. More exhilarating to watch to me than four ancient godlike beings pile-driving each other through skyscrapers while side characters somehow dodge millions of pounds of flying debris and lightning breath. Sir, has got that lizard juiced. So how can this be more exciting to watch than this? While I can acknowledge that comparing the world of Godzilla to something slightly more rooted in reality isn't totally fair to compare when it comes to an emotional response from its audience, and I am by no means hating on my boy Godzilla. Except for this one. Life moves pretty fast. I was more so shocked by how the filmmakers of The Queen's Gambit made chess. Chess, so exciting to me. Someone who knows only the rules and really none of the intricacies. Even some of my friends and relatives who know absolutely nothing about chess have really fallen in love with the show. Unsurprisingly, writer and creator Alan Scott faced the same dilemma when trying to pitch the story to studios. The story is too small and nobody cares about chess, is what was said. And if there's anything I've learned from being a full-time editor for about three years, it's that good editors have an ability to make almost anything interesting. Today on the very first episode of How Editing Makes This Scene Great, we will take a deep dive into the editing behind my favorite scene of the show. Beth's rematch against Grandmaster Borgov, and we'll find out how editor Michelle Tesoro was able to make chess so freaking intense. Demain, vous. Contre Grand Maître Borgov. Before I get into that though, it is crucial as an editor to get a good grasp on the various beats of the scene and understand where the scene fits into the story as a whole. First, let's summarize all the important beats that happen in the scene. Beth enters the room. She does her best to keep her composure here. Borgov realizes there's something off with Beth. Beth makes a big mistake. Borgov capitalizes on that mistake. Beth surrenders and is devastated. In the context of the entire narrative of the Queen's Gambit, using Dan Harmon's story circle, Beth is about right here. She has just worked her way to the finals of the most intense tournament of her chess career. However, in this scene, she is on the precipice of paying the price, unfortunately, for losing sight of her main goal, a side effect of her history of substance abuse and addiction. Je descends tout de suite, okay? This defeat should be very hard for the audience to watch, but it will eventually motivate her to not make the same mistake again, work even harder, and have changed, ultimately succeed. While this moment isn't quite her rock so bottom, to thank you in person. it does cast her into a downward spiral leading there. Anyway. The audience doesn't have to understand chess to know how Beth's game is going, thanks to one of the most important cinematic tools to ever exist, as well as an editor's best friend. I'm talking about the Kuleshov effect. In the simplest terms, the Kuleshov effect uses editing to help the viewer understand what the character is feeling through the juxtaposition of two separate shots. This classic example shows an image of a bowl of soup, then at Mr. Kuleshov staring. The audience can assume that that man is probably hungry. When we see a girl in a coffin and the same exact reverse shot of the man, now the audience perceives the man as being kind of sad. Lastly, there's an image of a woman on her eighth hour of watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians on the sofa. The man is ashamed. In The Queen's Gambit, the audience isn't expected to understand chess to process the power shifts occurring on the board, thanks to the Kuleshov effect and his dead blank stare. We can see this by replacing the soup and creepy dead girl with close-up chest moves, and Mr. Kuleshov with cuts to Beth and Borgov. During this match against Grandmaster Borgov, the Kuleshov effect paints an image that Beth is walking on thin ice every move she makes, and the next one just might break it. An author can just describe how a character is feeling with words, but a filmmaker must figure out a way to show it. Especially if the scene contains little to no dialogue. As an editor, you have to find bits and pieces from performances over numerous camera angles to manipulate the audience to feel a certain way. And in order to do that, they must convince the audience that a character feels a certain way. It's really the emotions and performances buried in the subtext, brought to life by the performers, that make scenes great. 
Let's break down how editing helps show inner dialogue in this scene. Go! Beth immediately takes a big drink of water, and a small glance to Borgov hints to the audience that she's trying to play it cool. But Borgov takes notice of her unusual behavior immediately, and the editor uses this close-up to signify Borgov's suspicion. This reverse shot to Beth's close-up and her expression tells the audience that Beth's effort to hide her situation is immediately blown. As the game progresses, Beth shows less and less constraint to hide her feelings and her hangover. Now take a look at this tracking shot. We see Beth shakily move her queen across the board, and the camera pans to Borgov, who is not watching her move, but instead just kind of staring at Beth almost disappointingly. Side note, there are numerous alludes to Beth being the white queen piece throughout the series, and this shot just reeks of symbolism. Immediately after, we see Beth go from frustration to frustrated embarrassment as she catches Borgov's disappointed stare. Her body language continues to get worse. Later, Borgov looks up from the board directly into the camera. He appears to be in control. This shot pans through the crowd and cuts to Beth. It seems like she's almost shielding her face from the spectators. She desperately requests more water. This cut to Borgov screams pity. Beth starts to lose focus on the game as she gazes into the crowd. At this point, she knows she's at a major disadvantage and contemplates making a move that looks almost painful to execute. Borgov immediately commits to the next move that will deliver the final blow and we see a mixture of disappointment and pity yet again in his expressions while Beth slowly comes to the realization that she has lost. Beth displays frustration, anger, and disappointment before storming off. And the final shot of the scene leaves Borgov wondering what in the world just happened. However, the slightest hint of a smile tells the viewer that Borgov may still believe in Beth Harmon. Now let's talk about flashbacks for a moment. Now, flashbacks are incredibly hit or miss in the world of storytelling. They can either add another layer of emotion to a scene or kind of just completely suck the momentum and pacing out from a scene. And I think the shots where Beth thinks back to her training with Benny fall into the category of the former. I think there are two main reasons these shots were included in the scene that immediately come to mind. On a surface level, it is Beth attempting to think back in her fuzzy mind to her training with Benny. And in the shot immediately following, we see Beth actually almost annoyed. She's either struggling to recall her training or just remembering something that she had forgotten in a prior move. But more importantly, I think these images remind the audience just how long and hard Beth has been preparing for this moment. Yet, we're forced to watch that all go to waste as she begins to let Borgov take complete control of the game. The final element that really puts this scene into checkmate is the brilliant sound design and score. In proper chess etiquette, the room is absolutely silent, and all we really hear is the ticking of the chess clock and pieces moving. But as the scene progresses, that silence is rudely interrupted by Beth's, we'll call it thirst. In a situation that's so formal and professional, these sounds are rather obnoxious, really drawing attention to Beth's hungoverness. Meanwhile, the score starts bluntly, immediately following Beth's slurp of water with a pluck of a cello string. It's almost comical, and paired with Borgov's reaction, it's a dead giveaway to the audience that Borgov almost immediately knows that something is amiss. Very poor. No, that's, gotta be more the ticking of the chess clock becomes louder, and the music all swells leading into this moment. Once again, you don't need to know anything about chess to understand that Beth has made the wrong move. Without video, you can actually hear the moment where the music gets darker. Like, way darker. So how did editing make this scene great, and how can you incorporate these principles in your editing? 1. Use the Kuleshov effect to hold the audience's hand. If something is a bit confusing like chess for some people, cutting to reactions will help the audience know how they should feel. For scenes with no dialogue, it's important to help the audience figure out what each person is thinking and experiencing. Edit your scenes so that there is absolutely no confusion in this regard. That can be accomplished by selecting the best takes from a performance standpoint and cutting them together to hit those beats where there is a large shift in tone. Flashbacks can work, especially if you keep them short and sweet.
Have your sound design swell into the climax of the scene to give it extra weight and significance. Also, don't be afraid to make your sound draw the audience's attention to something that sticks out like a sore thumb. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to The Edit Cove if you're an editor, filmmaker, or just someone who stumbled upon my channel and you learned something from this video. I'll be analyzing more scenes from film and television, and if there's a scene that you want me to break down, just comment down below and I'll add it to my list. Let me know if you'd also like to see examples of bad editing and what not to do. See you next time.